Mike with Insightful Imagery. I have a really neat video uh, to share with you today. It's really short. Uh, and there's a couple cool tricks that I want to share with you that you might find useful in your toy photography. But before we get started on that, uh, I want to ask you please like and subscribe uh, to the channel. I appreciate all the new subscribers that I've got and the response to the Jason Voorhees coming out of the coffin video. Uh, a lot of views on that and uh, a lot of new subscribers as a result of the F-Stoppers article that was written about that video. Really cool. Appreciate it guys. That being said, let's start talking about some fun stuff. Um, in the video you're going to see me using uh, this right here and what it is is it's a dirt bike um, obviously and I've attached it to a wooden base with three pieces of wire. Let me put a picture up here so that you can see uh, up close what it looks like. There's three pieces of wire that run through the bottom of this uh, run through the bottom of this board and and all they do is they offer stability to the the dirt bike. So you know when you're out there trying to pose an action figure uh, you know in a park or wherever you're at uh, you, you don't want to prop it up you want to find the best way to prop it up that offers the most stability um, so that you're not you know having to fuss around with trying to you know, make sure the wind doesn't blow and it falls over and oh I better get the picture before it falls over you want some stability and I was trying to rack my brain about how I'm gonna be able to do this and I thought man simple three wires and a piece of wood uh, so once again here's a picture and what it does is uh, I can take and take this, you know, there's a third wire on the back here. Uh, I can bend that back, you know, I can bend this wire over. And then this third wire kind of just goes in and, you know, offers a little stability on the side. So we can lean this motorcycle like all the way down with an action figure on it. Uh, you can raise it all the way back up. You can pose it in a variety of ways. And I built this. Uh, and showing you the pictures and you know and how it looks here maybe you can build you one too it just is a really cool way to be able to pose uh, and get a picture like this and that's the ghost recon uh, or ghost call of duty action figure from McFarland toys it's a really that toy and I'll link it in the, in the description down below too if you want to buy that on Amazon for the price that toy is full of incredible detail uh, you can't really see it so much in this image because it's kind of far away and he's on a dirt bike and flying through the air but that figure is so full of detail it's just really really incredible uh, any, anyway let me put that to the side another thing you're gonna see me use is this little bulb uh, rocket blaster for cleaning lenses it's dusty out there and I wanted to clean uh, you know you want to be able to clean your lens um, be, right before you you know take your shot you want to make sure a few little squirts of air on there clear any dust off your lens. You're out there in the field, it's dusty, there's stuff blown around. This also helps clear off, you know, props and figures, faces and things like that. This is in the description down below and it's also on my website under the uh, tab for gear that I use. That being said, uh, I don't want to talk a lot. Uh, we're going to do some voiceover in this video and I'm going to explain to you what I do. So uh, let's let's get going. What I'm doing here is I've chosen an elevated position on this picnic table because I want to lower my horizon. In the far background back there, you see a body of water and some structures way across the water. This technique works best when there's a long, uninterrupted space of the same type of terrain and some buildings way in the distance. So like if this was cluttered with like telephone poles and wires and stuff, it wouldn't work as well. But since it's pretty wide open all the way to the distant buildings in the back, this technique is going to work well. So I'm grabbing some tan bark from around the, the ground and I've put it on the picnic table here around the base of my, my action figure uh, on the dirt bike and sprinkle a little grass and some dry stuff around. I'm kind of just putting my scene together right now at this point and uh, the main thing is making sure of the background because I want to be able to use that distant background and the trees and stuff in this shot so that I can uh, you know have something back there to add some interest beside just you know blue sky and you know so this technique really helps with that. It lowers the horizon 
and brings things that are larger than your toy more into scale with your toy and so it, it's kind of a cool technique to be able to use and you can use a picnic table you can use later I'll show you I just use a milk crate and a piece of sheetrock it just whatever you can find to elevate your set off the ground it changes your horizon line and that helps make your toy photography outside like when you're doing it in the parks and stuff more interesting because you can incorporate more of the surrounding area into your scene and so right here I'm just grabbing my camera and I'm just gonna walk around and kind of loosely get an idea of where I want to stand where I want to put my tripod where I want to compose the scene from my angle of view so I take my camera off the tripod and I just walk around a little bit trying to see what's gonna give me the best perspective for how I see the shot in my head and and that's all I'm doing here I'm just kind of rolling focus and making sure that you know I find the spot that I like that's gonna give me the effect uh, that I'm after so once I do that then I just put my uh, camera back on the tripod and kind of fiddle with it <laughs> anyway so in the viewfinder I might see that I need to change a couple things uh, on the set I need to move some uh, some of the debris around to cover up some spots that I see are open when I look through the viewfinder and the picnic table shows through and so that's what I'm doing here I just kind of move move things a little bit around and I know already at this point where I'm going to be setting my camera and tripod and I'm going to go ahead and get my ghost action figure from Call of Duty I'm going to put him on the dirt bike here and this is where that stand comes in really handy that wire that I used really adds a lot of stability to this uh, dirt bike and it helps me be able to pose him in a solid stable way that's not all fiddly and fumbly and and kind of rigid or kind of kind of loose I mean let me get a gun out of the bag here this is the gun I'm gonna use it's pretty cool uh, he came with some really awesome weapons uh, well, he came with one weapon, but they detail it. Put it in his hand here and find a pose that, you know, works best. There we go. Got something that I like there. And his hand fell off a couple times and I had to put it back on. I edited that out, but his hands, man, if, if, if you lose one of those hands on the way to the location, you can forget it. They are small and black. He's not a seven inch figure. He's like barely six inches, man. He's small. And uh, so his hand kept falling off, but uh, and here we are. I'm loose. I'm just getting back in the position that I I found earlier that I think I would like to shoot from, and I'm just seeing how that looks with the weapon in his hand now, and how he looks on the dirt bike. And this is all just a matter of how you, you know, want your image to look. This is all subjective. It's there's no hard rules. You take your camera. You walk around you see what looks good what angle looks good to the viewfinder then you put your tripod there and that's where you're gonna shoot from it's it's not really complicated one of the things to be mindful of too is your angle the height of your tripod I'm adjusting my legs because I want a shot that's down low enough that creates a super uh, view of the action figure I, I want it to create a larger than life kind of uh, view and so I lower my tripod enough to get the action figure where I'm almost shooting up at him, but not so low that I get the picnic table edge in the in the shot. But getting down low and the composition here is what I'm doing. Uh, backing up a little bit, you know, trying to make adjustments for what's going to look real. Here I've just changed my camera view on the GoPro so that you can see what I'm doing from behind. And... I'm fiddling with something but uh, you know I'm far enough away and some people might ask well why are you not closer using a you know lens maybe with a shorter minimum focusing distance and the reason I I shoot this with a 200 and I have to be a little bit further back is because the 200 millimeter lens offers some great compression it fills the frame with your image and it just it helps sell the idea that this could be real whereas if I get in there with a macro and I get really close 
it, it doesn't offer the same um, view and it doesn't offer the, the same look t to the image. The compression isn't there. Yeah, I filled the frame with the figure because I moved the lens closer and so I get less of the background and I'm trying to get it all in here. And using this 200 millimeter lens, it's like one of my go-to lenses. I love this lens for toy photography. Whether I'm in the studio or outside, it's just really a great lens. And for portraits, I love it for portraits too of people. I use it quite often for that. But that being said, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and blow the dust, whatever might be on my lens, since I've been walking around and sprinkling dirt on the table and stuff. There might be some you know, particles on my lens. I'm gonna blow my viewfinder out. And now that I've got the scene set up, I've got the composition right, I've got the tripod set right, uh, clean my lens off, I'm gonna go down here and get into live view, and I'm gonna start getting my focus. And that's the next step. Uh, let me change my camera view. And you won't be able to see my settings on here because it's bright out and I can't get the GoPro close enough. But I'm always striving to shoot at ISO 100. Now, in this case, I want the background to be uh, as in focus as I can get because it's part of the scene here. And so I'm shooting this. I think I'm shooting this probably F22. And when you go that high, when you stop down that much, you'll get some dust spots in your in your image and you just clean those up in post but f22 is what i'm shooting at here because there is a big uh, great amount of distance between my subject and the background that i'm trying to include in the scene so f22 is going to get me what i want in the back and uh a nice sharp you know f image of the model on the dirt bike and here I'm just going through and I'm looking to see if I can get an autofocus point and you know lined up on the figure uh, just for better focus but I can't so I just go ahead and use live view no big deal uh, sometimes you know like this Canon this Canon camera here it's an older one and it doesn't have as many focus points uh, for autofocus and but it's okay I rarely ever use that anyway I always prefer the live view and manual focus technique and that's what I'm doing here I'm just making sure my focus is good but you can see how that stand that I made for the dirt bike comes in handy it's not gonna move I don't have to worry about wind blowing it over I don't have to worry about you know the stick that's holding it fell <laughs> you know it's just there and and that's what you want so here I'm gonna put my glasses on I can't get an autofocus point on the uh, action figure so like I say, I'm just going to go ahead and focus in uh, live view, and I'm going to focus manually at five times, and I'm going to zoom in to ten times, and I'm going to make sure the focus is good and, and, and dialed in as good as I can get it. And I need glasses because I'm older. <laughs> but at any rate, so once I get the focus locked in, I put my glasses away so I don't lose them. The next step is I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've metered the scene right. And for this, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm going to take a test shot using the camera's metering system. And I've got my wireless trigger in my hand there. I, once you get all this set up, you, you don't want to be touching the camera, especially if you're going to end up blending images later. You want them all to be taken without any camera motion so that when you go to stack any of these images, if that's what you're going to do later, you don't have any problem lying uh, nicely in Photoshop. So, got my wireless trigger in my hand. Let me change my sweater. <laughs> it's hot out. Like that? It's like color changing fabric, <laughs> right? Anyway, it's, it's like 80 degrees right there. And I picked the most wide open, sunniest spot that you could find, right? <laughs> it's sometimes I'm not the planner. But at any rate, once I got focus locked in, I'm going to walk over here. And I've got my camera set on 10 second timer. It gives me a chance to get a handful of dirt, get back in position and throw it behind the dirt bike as I listen for the audible tone the camera gives uh, before it counts down to 
actuate the shutter. I throw the dirt just as the uh, camera is about to take the image and I throw it right onto my reflector there. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's the first image. And if you look closely, you can see I've got some blur on his wristwatch. The rims are spinning. Uh, and there's a little bit of vibration blur in there too, which helps sell the image. So on the second setup, same thing. I'm trying to get some elevation out of this. And what that's going to do, here I used a milk crate and a piece of sheet rock and threw some dirt on top of it. And I've posed the figure this time in a way that I'm going to use the tree line back there uh, to make it look like he's higher up and he's come up a hill maybe and and those tree lines back there look more in scale with the action figure because I've lowered the horizon line if I shot him posed on the ground those trees you wouldn't even see the tops of them and so it wouldn't look realistic but by me raising him up lowering the horizon line lowering the trees it helps them look more in scale and look a little more believable when you take the final image. And so that's one of the great takeaways from this video is learning how to find an area that will work best uh, to, to use this technique. And a lot of times, like I say, when the terrain is uninterrupted by telephone poles and wires and things like that, you can do this technique and it works really well. Here I've got my wireless trigger set up. I'm blowing off the front of my lens again and I'm sweating because it's hot and there's no shade here. Everything's set up like I want. Getting ready to take a shot. Let me show you what this looks like though real quick before I do. See that there? I got him posed on there. He's standing up, kind of riding a wheelie. And uh, He's coming back. He's trying to rendezvous to the extraction point, and uh, he's riding hard, man. And you won't see any of the water in this shot. Ele uh, I've elevated the action figure, and I've lowered my camera angle, so you won't see any of the water. I didn't want to show the water because I I didn't have a background. I didn't have a uh, the ground that the soldier is riding on wouldn't match the water and that's another thing to consider is that if you can do this using like pavement and stuff too if you want cars in the distance you want it to make it look like he might be riding and there's some cars in the distance this technique works well with dirt and sand and water and stuff like that but you you need to be able to match the ground that it's on with where you're shooting at so if you want to shoot like on the pavement make it look like a highway you need to have some sort of texture on there that makes it look like he's riding on pavement. Here it's really easy because it's dirt all around and it's believable. And so that's something else to consider. I took my little garden shovel, sprinkled a little more dirt on there because there were some bare spots. Making sure everything's good again since I touch stuff. I want to make sure my focus is good and my composition is good. And really, you know, this is a really simple thing to be able to do. You know, find you a park bench, find you a, even a tree stump. Uh, gives you some elevation. And just look for a background that's going to work. You know, and go out there and work with your angles until you get a perspective that's believable. And that you find, you know, in the viewfinder looks good to you. Uh, all else help. You know, in post, of course, I spin... I add some sp uh, spinning blur to the rims and stuff like that, and maybe a little fragment uh, distortion in there in order to create some vibration blur. Uh, in this particular image, when I post the final, you'll see that I use some smoke to make it look like he's damaged and he's riding hard to get back to the rendezvous point. I'll post that image up here, but that's it, guys. It's really easy. I hope you learned something from this. I hope you can take away some good information that might help you in your toy photography. The big takeaway is angles, elevation, lower your horizon. 
and you can get some good toy shots outside with just natural lighting and action figure and surrounding tree lines or structures off in the distance you can you can start to incorporate some of those uh, buildings and stuff into your shot and you don't have to build a diorama for everything <laughs> which is nice and healthy you just gotta look and experiment and find the angle get out there and have a good time and that's what I'm showing here this angle and how elevating helps sell this illusion and uh, I'm gonna post the final image up right here so you guys can take a look and see see here you can see how that base helped it elevated him over the dirt the tree line in the back looks really good it's believable you know uh, I put some smoke on there coming off like he took a hit He's coming back with some bike issues, but he's coming back. He's twisting the grip. He's getting back. He's got to meet his buddies at the extraction point. Then he can ditch the bike and let it burn. But see how angles really help out here. And this may be something you guys already know, but, you know, it's good to see it in action. Maybe you're hearing it again, and hopefully it helps you uh, in creating some cool toy photography with your toys you can start using some vehicles. You can start, you know, against different background structures that that help create a more interesting uh, toy photography image. At any rate, okay. Well, that's all there is to that, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this. Like and subscribe. Insightful underscore imagery is my Instagram. And insightfulimagery.com is my website. Get on there and check out some of the gear that I use. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you guys next time.